All right, welcome back. Time to talk tech on the marketplace. Binance, the world's leading blockchain and cryptocurrency infrastructure provider, is now allowing users in Benin, Cameroon, Ivory Coast, Democratic Republic of Congo, Togo, and Senegal to purchase crypto directly through mobile money payments enabled through uh, local partnerships. Uh, here to tell us more is the lead for Ice of um, Africa, Henry Kobler. Good afternoon to you, Henry. So what more do you know about this uh, partnership? Thank you very much, Daryl. So Daryl, if you remember, the very first time we spoke about cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin was running around $26,000. Today, Bitcoin is actually running around $67,000. 67000 Yes. Wow. <laughs> so if you invested in Bitcoin at the very first time we had this conversation on TV, I'm sure that you would probably have made huge investment. But coming on to it, definitely um, it's one of the things that I personally have sort of pushed as an agenda uh, to say that cryptocurrency and, and blockchain technology is really going to be one of the bedrocks for our financial institutions in, in the very few years to come. And if you're looking at a trend which is taken on by Binance, which is probably um, the uh, biggest um, wallet company or software company that, that really trades with um, digital assets, you'd realize that they're making so much effort into bridging that gap between, I mean, all the regions. And so they are not just focusing on, on the U.S. markets or the um, less privileged markets are also sort of in, in, in place. And so um, um, Benin, Cameroon, Ivory Coast, Congo, Togo, Senegal, are now allowing um, mobile money to be used to buy cryptocurrency. And that's huge because wow. again, these are services that are so easy um, placed on for non-bankers and bankers together. And so um, if you are in any of these countries, that means that for now, you can sort of buy cryptocurrency directly from your mobile wallet, which is huge. And that's a bit of an advancement, which actually tells us that this is really close um to to us than we we actually thought and so um for me i'm looking at a, a bit of a um, trend where if these countries are all allowing bitcoin and other digital assets to be bought from mobile money wallets this is going to be like the next big thing when it has to be in terms of money transactions all across um in in africa what this means is that i could send the money from my cryptocurrency wallet as Bitcoin or USDT or Ethereum directly to somebody in, in um, what you call it, Togo or in um, Cameroon in a matter of seconds. And they should be able to have access to this funds through their mobile money wallet. And that should tell you that it means that the cryptocurrency sort of is getting closer and closer. Mm. And even the point where money transactions uh, happen um, from um, border uh, points now is getting to be to be raised based on the blockchain technology and for me it's a, it's a good news but also scary i'm looking at what um uh, uh, uh um, financial institutions are looking into uh, uh, building on this as well and generally preparing themselves for that massive change that is going to hit the financial market yeah it makes you wonder for how long ghana can hold off uh, adopting cryptocurrency the last we checked the central bank was uh, proposing new cryptocurrency regulations uh, the new rules which will be aimed at uh, safeguarding against financial crimes in digital assets, the digital asset sec sector. Um, it talked about doing some sandbo sandbox text testing by the end of August. We haven't had news about the outcome of that, but it looks like uh, it, it wouldn't be long before Ghana has to take that decision of adopting cryptocurrency. Yes, I mean, uh, it's, it's really going to be in, in that path. Um, but I'm also looking at how Bank of Ghana is really looking at um, pushing in their e-currency, which is basically going to be the bedrock and the educational part of being able to use the guitar assets um, and then basically rolling on to the uh, mainstream uh, digital assets that are available. But I, I really don't see so much being being done, especially at the speed to which, I mean, uh, these digital currencies are sort of being out there. Now it's sort of declared as, okay, you can, you can be on. But again, it's running at a very fast speed and it deals with a lot. I mean, there are quite a number of people that are looking in this uh, in terms of greed and in terms of investment points, mm -hmm. in terms of being able to keep um, digital assets. When I go to the banks and I'm not able to access foreign uh, forex, I'm actually buying forex on 
um, what do you call it, on, on digital assets. And so I'll probably be able to hold, let's say, 20000 or $30,000 or $200,000 in digital assets. And I can still feel it safe because based on the trends in the market and the, uh, the encryptions that are sort of available enough to keep these assets, I think that there should be more in terms of the regulator side to uh, get in. I'm sure that the regulator basically is doing a lot of studies, but mm. again, the asset is not waiting for them. All right, a bit of Binance news. Uh, just as we're coming on the air, Nigeria has dropped money laundering charges against uh, the detained Binance executive. Um, you can check that out. But yeah. one more thing before we go, uh, because you have just about a minute or two, WhatsApp has announced new features that will allow users to save contacts with the app. Uh, tell us what you know about these new features and how is it helpful for businesses? Amazing technology. I mean, they are running on the identity proof linked storage, which is um, an encryption storage system that they, they sort of uh, put in, in. I mean, if you lose your WhatsApp and you sort of reconnect, you lose all your conversations and all. Um, in, in this regard, um, WhatsApp is saying that they are able to keep all your contacts and you can actually tag them by usernames. And so whenever you're sending um, a contact to someone, you don't even need to share the number directly with them. They basically have to just share the username and then people uh, have conversations over um, the, the WhatsApp platform easily. And you can also keep, get to keep all your conversations in one place, even when you have to lose your account. And again, you're also having to connect with Cloudflare, which basically has um, uh, in terms of uh, cryptography properties, basically to be able to protect changes that are done uh, to these directories. That means that whenever you have to make major changes to say a contact or, or any otherwise, there's going to be a record mm. and this is going to be able to okay. keep some fraud or people using WhatsApp contacts or people being able to hack into contacts for uh, people's WhatsApp and being able to have conversations um, directly on there. This is this is amazing for me generally, but All I right. feel that it's also a very sneaky way to get all our contacts into a storage and cloud and, and being We've, able to use AI to sort of understand what yeah. we're all doing and, and also advance their marketing prospects. But again, really it's technology. Okay. You can't okay. actually take the privacy away. We've got to run. Good to see you. Uh, we'll talk sometime soon. Henry Kobler there. Um, more news on our website, myjoinline.com.